These five flagship smartphones are all powered by different chipsets. So today we'll be comparing the Huawei Pure 80 Ultra, Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra, Nothing Phone 3, Vivo X200 Pro, and iPhone 16 Pro Max in four different benchmarks, where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling, score, and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a Lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. The Huawei is running a Kirin 9020 chipset, which uses an older 7 nanometer process node and has the lowest clock speed here. The Nothing phone uses a 4 nanometer powered Snapdragon 8S Gen 4 CPU and the rest all sit on 3 nanometer nodes. With the Samsung running an overclocked Snapdragon 8 Elite chip, which boasts the highest clock speed of the lot. They all make use of LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage, except the iPhone, which sticks to NVMe storage. All of them have 120 Hz LTPO displays, except the Nothing phone, which has an LTPS panel. They have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes if available. Today, we'll be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, and 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite. And in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes, which devices will come out on top in terms of efficiency and cooling, and will the Huawei and Nothing phone be able to keep up? This is Tech Nick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things going, we're gonna be checking out their battery percentages at the start of the test, and we'll compare this at the end for a milliamp hour per minute reading. We'll also be using a heat gun with an emissivity level of 0.5 since that's the most accurate when testing electronic devices. And we're sitting at a room temperature of around 16.7 degrees Celsius and we've had the AC on for hours before the test and throughout the test at 16 degrees Celsius. On idle, the Nothing phone is the hottest and the iPhone is the coolest. The first benchmark we'll be running is Antutu, and while Android uses OpenCL and GL and iOS uses Metal API, we can't exactly compare GPU and Vulkan scores here. It seems though that the latest iOS update and Antutu update for iOS has now made it more comparable than ever before. Antutu pretty much tests everything though. CPU processing, GPU power with a base test and a demanding test. Memory testing for RAM and ROM and user experience testing for optimizations, PDF and image processing, and even video editing and rendering. Now there's no denying that the Huawei is the least capable here with its seven nanometer chip low clock speeds and dated Android software, but they always seem to be very well optimized, so I'm expecting great battery life and cooling efficiency. The Samsung might be running Qualcomm's flagship chip, but I wouldn't write off the 8S Gen 4 seen in the Nothing Phone 3, as its all big core design should allow it to keep up. I say all big core design because it has no efficiency cores. Most of these don't have efficiency cores, except for the A18 Pro, which does, and that's a hexa-core, and the Kirin 9020, which has four efficiency cores, but it has one prime core and three performance cores. The Snapdragon 8 Elite is also an all big core design, as well as the MediaTek Dimensity 9400. When it comes to temperatures after Antutu, oddly enough, the Samsung gained the most temp in degrees Celsius, and the iPhone gained the least. The Samsung and Vivo are pushing the most power though, so it's kinda expected. But I'm quite impressed with the Huawei here, which landed close to the iPhone, even with its seven nanometer efficiency. The next benchmark is Geekbench 6, which mainly focuses on single and multi-core CPU speeds. An interesting thing to note here is that the Huawei actually pops up with 12 cores in third-party apps due to its main and performance cores, utilizing hyper-threading for better multitasking capabilities. The Huawei's chip might be the least impressive on paper, but I can assure you it feels just as quick as any other phone here when using it on the daily. It's completely normal for temps to drop a bit after Geekbench, as it's not as demanding or as long as Antutu, but if temps drop by a lot, it's usually a good indication of throttling. Thankfully, none of them dropped by all that much, with the iPhone dropping the most. The iPhone is still the coolest and the Samsung is still the hottest. Our last two benchmark tests are within the 3D Mark app, and since each test is just one minute long, we'll record temps after both tests. The first test, Wildlife Extreme, which is this one, is a mobile bench rendered at 4K. And then after this, we'll jump into Steel Nomad Lite, which is rendered at 1440p resolution and is intended for lightweight PCs. I wanted to test out Solar Bay as well, but the Huawei doesn't have hardware-based ray tracing, so it's not available to test. The iPhone has the highest GPU frequency here at 1.68 GHz, then the Vivo at 1.612 GHz, the Samsung runs at 1.2 GHz, 
the Nothing phone at 1.15 GHz and the Huawei at 840 MHz. So while I'm not expecting much from the Huawei here, it's worth mentioning that in my recent review, better check that out after this, it managed a very stable FPS while playing demanding games, averaging an identical FPS to even the best chipsets around. The iPhone is known to not score as high as flagship Android phones when it comes to graphics benchmarks, but the new iPhone is around the corner and I'm expecting some decent improvements. After both 3D Mark tests, the iPhone was once again the coolest, but this time the Samsung gained the least temp. The Nothing phone got the hottest and the Vivo gained the most temperature. And overall temperature from start to finish, the Vivo gained the most while the Nothing phone ended off the hottest. The iPhone ended the coolest and gained the least, but the Huawei really wasn't far off. But when it comes to battery life, the Huawei actually beat the iPhone, coming in with the least milliamp hour permanent drain. The iPhone wasn't too far off, but the Samsung drained the most and ended off with the worst milliamp hour permanent reading. But that great battery performance from the Huawei resulted in it placing last in Antutu. The iPhone just barely beat the Nothing phone here, but this is the best score I've ever seen from an iPhone, and it actually came out on top in terms of CPU score. Interestingly, the Nothing phone got the highest memory score, the Samsung placed second and got the highest GPU score, and the Vivo made it to first place and achieved the best user experience score. And while the Huawei, Samsung and Nothing phone retained their placements in Geekbench single core scores, this time the iPhone came out on top, putting the Vivo behind the Samsung. In multi-core though, the Samsung came out ahead of the iPhone by quite a bit. The Samsung claimed another win in 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, but the Vivo wasn't far off and managed to trade places with the iPhone. It's interesting to see that the Nothing phone performed almost as well as the iPhone here. And in Steel Nomad Lite, the Nothing phone actually pulled ahead of the iPhone, and the Vivo dethroned the Samsung putting the Vivo in the top spot. After averaging their placements with Geekbench split in two, the Samsung placed first overall, followed closely by the Vivo in second, and then the iPhone, Nothing Phone, and Huawei. I was kinda expecting the Samsung and Vivo to come out ahead here, but I was quite surprised by how close the Nothing Phone got to the iPhone. And while the Huawei placed last in all tests, it came out on top in terms of battery life despite its 7 nanometer chipset and outdated software. I guess optimizations do play a huge role. I mean, after all, the Huawei still feels just as fast as any other phone here on the daily, and it games just as well too, even if its benchmark scores don't reflect that. The Huawei seriously impresses in terms of camera performance though, so stay tuned for my upcoming camera comparison. As always, this is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.